Welcome back. This is part two of a free part tutorial series I'm doing on making this little Corgi character in Blender. So like I said in part one, if you haven't already seen that, I mentioned there that this is kind of like somewhere between beginners and intermediate. So it's not hard. It's not super simple either. So it's kind of like you need to know the basics, but I definitely wouldn't call it hard. So if you're still new to Blender, but you know basic modeling and navigation, you should be fine. Okay. So um, yeah, let's jump into part two and continue making our little character here. So now that we're in part two, um, we're gonna join a lot of the things together here for our little Corgi character. So let's grab the body. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here and bring the subdiv down to one. I'm gonna come to drop down and apply it. And then we're gonna grab the legs here. I'm gonna apply the mirror for that. We're gonna grab the arms. We're gonna come to drop down and apply the mirror for that. We're gonna grab the head and bring it down one level. We're gonna apply the mirror for that. I'm gonna grab the corgi ears and I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mirror. And then with the ears selected, holding in shift, we're gonna select the legs, the body and the arms. So with these things all selected, holding in shift as well, just select the tail. And then the last thing while we're holding in shift, we're gonna select this the head. And we're gonna go control J and we're gonna join it together. So it's now all one object with the exception of the eyes here, okay? So let's grab the eyes. Uh, we can come to the drop down, apply them. Grab the nose and we're gonna apply the subdiv at a level of two. There we go. And let's grab this thing here and just leave it as it is. So these um, face objects here, we'll keep them all separate. The main thing we wanna mess with is the corgi body itself. So if you grab the body now and you go into edit mode, this is what you should see, okay? So now what we could do is actually come here and double click on this object that we have selected. Let's just call it corgi. And I'm just gonna go back into object mode. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go with our Corgi selected, we're gonna go into our UV editing workspace. And let's come here to our edge select. And we're gonna start by coming to the middle edge here on our head. We're gonna go Shift, Alt, left click. And it's gonna loop select the whole thing, like so. And we're gonna come here to the ear, Shift, Alt, left click on one of these edges running along, like so. So it goes all the way around. And come over here, Shift and Alt, left click on this one. So you can see we have this looped, we have this looped and the ear looped over here. And we're gonna come here to the body and grab this one here on the side. So if you go to your side view, shift alt left click on this one and it should go all the way around like so. And let's now go to the arm here, shift alt left click on this one. It doesn't go all the way through because of the triangle. So we're gonna go to the bottom, shift alt left click on one of these edges. So you can see now that's looping around. And let's do the same thing over on this side, like that. Let's come over here, Shift Alt, left click, Shift Alt, come in inside here and just select one of these. Okay, so we have it looping around here. And then Shift and Alt still, let's left click on one of these edges coming down. And then over here on this side, Shift Alt, left click on one of these edges. And now you can see this is what we have. All of these are selected like that. And I guess we could even come here to the back, Shift Alt, left click, only in one of these in the middle going up on the tail. That's it. And now we're gonna go Control E or Command E over here and we're gonna go Mark Seam. And now they all turn red. Now we're gonna press A to select everything and we're gonna press U and we're gonna click on Unwrap. So U for Unwrap and then come here and click on Unwrap. And now everything is unwrapped over here. Let's just come over here with everything active over here. Let's just come to the pivot transform, make it individual origins, and you just go S and just slightly with S scale it all down. So there's a little bit of a gap between everything. And let's just send it back to median point. And now we're gonna come over here to our texture paint window. We're gonna go new and let's just come here and call this Corgi. And we'll just leave it as the default here. But what we could do is come here to the color and let's just go drag this value up and let's just make it kind of like our base Corgi color. So I'm gonna go with something about here, kind of like a creamish kind of soupy brown. I'm gonna go ahead, okay. And now this is our base color. So now we're gonna just go with our Corgi is still selected. So we're gonna go over to our material properties. We're gonna go new and call this Corgi. We're gonna go to the base color. We're gonna give it an image texture and then come to the drop down and click on that Corgi, like so. And now we can see it over here in our texture paint. So now all we have to do 
is come and paint in our colors. Now I've realized that this is probably not the color I want now I'm looking at it. I might just come here, and this is a good opportunity to show you guys. Um, let's just come over here to our active tool properties. Let's just come down here to the color picker and I'm gonna make it a bit lighter in value and come more into this sort of blush kind of color. And I'm just gonna come with the brush here selected, the draw brush. I'm just gonna go and paint over my corgi wherever I want to paint it. There we go, like so. And something interesting is happening here, which I'll show you guys in just a second, right? See these ears here? They're not painting at the moment. And that is actually because the normals are inside out. So if we actually just hit tab to go to edit mode, we can press A to select everything, go Alt N and just go recalculate outside. Then let's go back in to our texture paint. Now we should be able to paint this. So if you ever run into that issue and it's really annoying, sometimes for beginners, that's one of the things you'll have to troubleshoot, okay? So just keep that in mind. But now we can see we've painted our Corgi. And it doesn't really matter that I've gone over a different color now because I really wanted to kind of demonstrate that to you guys anyway. So now we have our base color for our Corgi. Now let's come over here and kind of get like a pinkish kind of color. And what we want to do, we want to paint the inside of the ears, but we don't want to accidentally get it on the head. So let's just press tab again. And let's just click and drag at the top just to select a little bit of both ears and then go control L. That's going to select everything and then go control I to inverse the selection and press H. So control I to inverse and then press H to hide. Then go back in to your texture paint. And now we have nothing in the way. So now we can come over here and we can just paint with that pink in the inside here of our corgi ear, like that. Let's just come, and actually you can see over here, it's done it on the same side because I might actually somewhere have the mirroring enabled. I'm not quite sure, let me have a look. Okay, so I think I have symmetry turned on here. So it means it's painting on both sides because it is symmetrical. Um, I think if I turn that off on the X symmetry, okay, yeah, so that's definitely, what I had on, but actually I might actually leave under the symmetry. I might leave the X on because then it kind of saves us a bit of time. So kind of like a happy little accident there in a, in a way. So we'll just stick with that. So yeah, once you're happy painting the inside of the ear, you can press tab again to go back into edit mode and press Alt H to bring everything back. And now let's actually go back into texture paint. And now let's go over here click on this color, come to our color picker and then come over here and just click on this corgi body color to sample it again. And let's just take the value down just a little bit and make it a little bit more brown. There we go. And now we can come over here, press F to grow our brush. And let's just paint his belly and go up like that. Just like that. You can do whatever color you want. Corgis probably don't even have this sort of color arrangement, but that's what I'm gonna do because I think it looks really cute. Something like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna go image, save as, and I'm just gonna for now go to my desktop and just call it corgi.png, save as image. And what's something else we can do? We could probably come here. Let's just make a nice kind of pink material, color over here and the pink value, something like that. I'm just gonna go F to grow the brush and I'm just gonna get him right here on the cheeks just to give him a little bit of blush. And I think that looks really cute. So now we have that done. I'm just gonna once again image, save and now it's saving that texture. Let's go back to our layout. And it's okay if you can't see the texture because we're in a different view now. So let's just grab the eyes here and go to our materials, go new, and let's just call it eyes. Let's just go to a base color here and make it black and bring down the roughness almost all the way. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna select the nose and give it a new material and call it nose. We're gonna make that one black almost, but a little bit brown. And we're gonna bring the roughness only slightly down. And we're gonna do the same with the mouth. We're gonna grab that and just give it that same nose material. And now, if we go Z and we go material preview, we should see our little corgi here. And this is kind of already looking really cute, but it's nowhere near as cute as we can possibly make it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna to go to our mesh options, add in a plane. We're gonna go S and scale this plane up and then go S, X, there we go. And then let's tab into edit mode and with our edge, let's select the edge of the back. And in our side view, we're just gonna extrude it back and up a few times, like so. Let's go back into object mode. And in our front view, we can go shift A, let's just add in a camera, move it up and then just move it back on the Y. Then with your camera active, go to your camera settings and give it 120 on the focal length. 
go back to your camera view and you might have to move your camera back a bit if it's in too close. There we go. And then we're gonna grab your floor over here and you're gonna right click and go shade smooth. And let's actually grab the floor and the camera. And then we're gonna press M and we're gonna create a new collection and call it stage. Go okay. And we can now take the stage and we can turn that off if it's in our way. Okay, so but we'll leave the render on. So for now, let's just turn the stage off, like so. And let's just go over to our render properties. If you have it set to EV, just make sure to change it back to cycles. And you can also go down to your render samples and mine is set to 40, but yours will probably be really high, like 4,000 or something. So just bring it down to 40 or 50 samples. Um, you'd probably work a little bit higher since you're not doing a tutorial, but for me, um, to be a little bit faster, I'll keep it at a lower sample rate. As long as you have denoising, you should get a relatively good result. So we got our render engine set up. Let's just quickly go Shift A, just add in a light, add in an area light and move it over to the side. Rotate it and press S to scale and then under your light settings, let's give it a strength of 120. And then let's bring back our stage. And in fact, let's just take our light with it active and press M and move it to the stage. So now if we actually go into our camera view and we press Z and we go rendered, we can actually take this light while we're working and we can go Shift D to duplicate it and bring it kind of behind the character and Shift D again, kind of a little bit from the front like so. Okay, and once you have that done, you can grab the floor, you go to materials and go new, and just call it floor. And then let's just come here for now and make it kind of slightly bluish. And we're gonna come here to the specular and we're gonna take this IOR level and just drag it and just drag it all the way down to zero. I might just grab these lights and move them up just a little bit. And this is what we have so far. So now we can actually come here and just turn off our stage, as you can see. And we can at any point um, take our main collection here. Let's double click on it and just call it Corgi. So we have our Corgi and we have our stage. Um, this one here is just another collection that I have. Don't worry about that. The only two collections we want is our Corgi and our stage. So the Corgi contains our Corgi over here. It contains the eyes. So we can actually double click on that and just call it eyes. Let's click on our nose, come up here to the selection, call it nose. And we can click on the mouth, which is the torus here. And let's just call that mouth. So now we have our Corgi collection and our stage with all of our lights and our camera and our floor. So now let's go into our camera view by pressing zero. Let's grab our little Corgi and let's quickly give it a particle system. We'll do that in the next part. So in the next part, we'll create a particle system, so the hair. And then we'll also give them a little scarf and then we'll render them out as a final little character render. So um, that'll be in the next part. I'll see you guys then. And as always, I will be uploading this blend file to my Patreon. So all of that is in the description below.